Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music, blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today it is Monday, June 3rd, 2024. That is more than four years of Torah every single day of coming together as a community for four years and three months and 1,000 and, oh, I don't know how many. Penny, tell me. 1,065 broadcasts. Today is also day 241 since October 7th. There is power in the air after yesterday's Israel Day on 5th. I'm going to be talking about that experience. But most of all, I'm so excited to see all of you. I'm most excited to see Ariel. Hi, beautiful. So good to see my daughter. For us to know that we are together as a family from all over the world, celebrating Torah, supporting each other, and not getting quiet when it comes to the demand that all of our family members be brought home now. Let's see who's here so we can get started. Good morning, Cecile and Barbara, Jacqueline, Linda, and Rose, Barry, and Anya, Booker, Tov, Hi, Stan. Good to see you, Arlene. Good to see you, Hope in My Heart, too. Fabrice and Carl, Dale, good morning. Debbie, good to see you. Lydia and Jerry, Stan, my friend, so good to see you. A lot of love. Shush, hi, sending love back to the Smoky Mountains. Cassandra and Rosa, good to see you. Marsha, what a day yesterday was in New York City. I'm really glad we were able to live stream that. I'm glad you saw it too. Susie, sending love to Toronto. Arlene, what a great thing it was that we got to share at that parade. So much to say about it. Ron and Siona, Marsha and Natalie, Bokitov, hi, Patty. Hi, Siona. You're in time. You're back in time from your routine doctor's appointment. Thank God it was just routine. All right. Barbara sending love to Colorado. Judy Kaftal. Okay, everybody, everybody, you shower love on this heroic, wonderful human being. Judy has been making sure that the parade happens for a very long time. This is a significant portion, Judy, of your legacy in the world, though there are countless other beautiful things you've done too. Yesterday was exquisite, and speaking personally, it was needed. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for all you do. So grateful for who you are. So grateful for what yesterday was for all of us. Roberta, today is the yurt site of your father. Bless your father's memory. Thank you for sharing that with us. Today's Torah is in memory of your father and Judy. Today's Torah is in honor of you. Let's take a second, take a breath, sing a bracha, learn some Torah. And if you'd like to share just a little bit of inside baseball, this is the guitar that was my father-in-law's, Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach. And when the, the pandemic began, I didn't have my guitar. My guitar was in my office in the city. Um, and so I played his guitar for the first 50 broadcasts or so, uh, at which point I was able to go retrieve my guitar. Today, for a bunch of reasons, I'm going to be using his guitar again. So proud to share that with you all. Let's take a breath, sing a blessing, learn some Torah.
Bless you all. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Joanna, for asking. We're going to make sure to post tomorrow the link for um, the streaming of, uh, of tomorrow night's um, very special celebration. There are many beautiful things to share about it. Um, I'm humbled that UJ is going to be honoring me tomorrow night, but I want to amplify with any attention that comes my way that we will have survivors from Kibbutz Be'eri joining us, and we will have, um, this was just confirmed uh, two days ago, um, former Prime Minister Naftali Bennett will be joining us and speaking to the community. So it's going to be a very big night. We will share the streaming link for those who can't make it in person. We'll share it here on tomorrow's broadcast, and I will be sharing it also on my personal social media feeds later today. So I am um, really touched, touched by what tomorrow night means. I feel very overwhelmed by it, um, and I'm really honored to share it all with you because after all, it is honoring our community, this special morning to our community for all the times that we have come together to learn. So um, let's learn a little bit of Torah and then I will be bringing it directly in to, um, I'll be bringing it right into the, the Parsha. Anyway, we're a lot going on. New book, a new book, friends. We get to start a new book of Torah. The book of Bamidbar, the book of Numbers, we read this week and this coming Shabbat. And you might realize, if you know a little bit of Hebrew, that the word Bamidbar does not translate to the name of the book that we call it in English, which is Numbers. And often you see a discrepancy between the names of the books in Hebrew and in English. And English is often actually Greek or Latin. Um, the, the translation of of Bamidbar is in the desert or in the wilderness. So why is it called Numbers? It's called Numbers because the book begins with a census. And we'll deal with the census later. I want to deal with the, the idea of Bamidbar, the desert itself, which, like I said, can be translated as wilderness. And those mean two different things. A desert sounds like a certain kind of an experience. Often I think about, you know, cinema moments or, you know, mythic moments of what it is to be in a desert. The wind is howling, there are dunes, there's nothing in sight. But actually having spent time in a desert, hiking and really just meditating, it can be a place of incredible majesty. I, of course I'm speaking from a place of having what I need and bringing it with me. So I'm never worried about not having enough very different for people who now live in the desert, the Bedouins and other communities who are determined to continue making their home in ancient ways in the desert. Nor am I comparing myself to my ancestors, who certainly did not have at their disposal what we have. But the other way of understanding it, actually one other way, because there are clearly many, is a place of, of hardship. You see, in the tradition of the Torah and in the prophets, the way that we look back at the time that our ancestors spent in the desert really varies. You know, there's a beautiful song, it's straight from the prophets, and we sing it on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It's part of the liturgy. So you might know this melody. Zacharti lach chesed I remember our young love. Ahavat really like the fresh bloom of a honeymoon. And the second half of the verse says, A place where no one had ever been, a place where no one had walked. It was new, our beloved God says to us, it was new, and a new place where no one had walked, a place of love, a honeymoon. That's that way of remembering the desert. But you also might know that elsewhere in Tanakh, elsewhere in the Hebrew Bible, there's another way of remembering it. The other way of remembering the desert, we sing Friday nights. This is straight from Psalms. Arba'im shana akut bedor 
Vahomar amtoi livavim. For 40 years, I wrestled with that people, and they would never listen. Their hearts would never stay true. And I swore they'd never make it. So is the desert a place of wandering, of discovery? Is it a place of honeymoon and love? Is it a place of ongoing rebellion? And the answer to all three questions is yes. It is all of those things. But it is uncharted territory because even if you've walked in the desert, the wind will come and cover your footsteps. And there you are looking back and there is no trail. It's a strange place that is redefinable over and over. When we look back at the beginning of our own journey as a people, I don't mean as a clan, as a kin, with Avraham and Sarah. I mean as Am Yisrael. Am Yisrael began in the desert. Here we are, able, obligated, challenged to look at our journey and to see that beneath the sand is love. Beneath any surface level is our footstep. It's not the same, clearly, but just yesterday with 45,000 people, we walked up Fifth Avenue, loud and proud as Jews, waving flags, holding our children. I was blessed to be on the UJA float where we welcomed dignitaries and leaders and our queen. Oh my God, our queen. Eden Golan. She is just everything. She got onto the float. If you don't know who she is, I invite you to look her up. I'll be speaking a little bit about her right now. She represented Israel at Eurovision. And the song that she had written was called October Rain. And it is a devastatingly beautiful song. The way that she performed it was called Hurricane because Eurovision, the competition, said it was too political. And she faced unbelievable anti-Semitism and threats and booing um, the entire time, and she was just magnificent and noble. And if you look closely at what she wore to perform, there was a clever use of the fabric to make the number seven for October 7th. And the dancers and she moved their bodies to represent the way hostages were taken, the way their bodies were made to move. And she sang and ended in Hebrew. And when she got on the float, I said, there is Am Yisrael. Beautiful and poetic and noble. She sang the song. She, she actually lip synced because it was just too much noise everywhere. Seven times. And I cannot tell you, first of all, how it felt to be so close to her and to feel the song coursing through us and to see everyone around us, Hillel students and grandparents and people who are visibly religious and people who are visibly not, old and young, just looking to her, looking to her. An iconic moment of Jewish history happened yesterday. And I just want to echo yesterday's power. I needed it. We needed it so badly. I hope you look at the visuals at the sounds, at the beautiful face of our CEO, Eric Goldstein, who has been leading our work indefatigably with such spirit. He stood next to Eden Golan on the float. He walked with Mayor Adams yesterday. He walked with Governor Hochul. He walked with Representative Richie Torres. He walked with countless others. And what we have right now, friends, is a chance to understand that yes, we are walking in the desert. Boy, are we walking in the desert. But that desert can also be full of love. And that's up to us to make sure that the, to the story that we tell, the story that we tell is about love and about taking steps forward. 
knowing that sometimes it can be a wilderness, but it can also be just beautiful and joyful. I was blessed in addition to all of those other ways and humbled to be with you, J.A., in the way that I get to be, to have two of my children with me on the float, watching their strength, their joy, singing songs, singing songs. There's a, a more modern Am Yisrael Chai. My, my father-in-law wrote the original Am Yisrael Chai for the Soviet Jewry movement in the 60s. This Am Yisrael Chai, the chorus says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shomer Aleinu, the Holy Blessed One protects us. And then the very next section says, Shmor Ali Ladenu, protect our children. My children were right there with me. So join with me in reflecting the power of yesterday. Soak it in. And remember, I know you do, that today is day 241. Let's demand of heaven. And let's demand of our elected leaders that today is the day we bring our family home. Today is day 241. It is unfathomable. And we, friends, we do not slow down. We do not get quiet. We demand of heaven, Shmor Ali Ladenu, protect our children. Shmor et asavtaot, the sab and all of our sabas. Protect our family. Walk together. Later today, I'll be moderating a panel with Muslim families whose children were also taken hostage on October 7th, though the world seems not to remember that. We'll be moderating that panel on behalf of Muslim, Christian, and Jewish clergy at UJA. I invite you, friends, to double down in your efforts. Let yesterday be fuel for the march ahead. What a blessing yesterday was. What a refueling for our souls. May our families be whole soon. May we do the work we must do so that when we look back at this desert we walk through, we remember the love. And let's cultivate that love so that we can pour it into our family when they come home. May it be soon and in our day. Let's sing. Send your heart to the East. Kolon Baleva Pneema Nefesh Yehudi Homia Ulefate Mizrach Kadima Ain Letzion Sophia Olo Avda Tikvatenu Ha tikva bat shnot al paim, liot am choshi, peatzenu, eretz zion virushalayim, liot am choshi, peatzenu, eretz Zion, Virushalayi. Bless you, friends. Am Yisrael Chai. Bring them home now.